The Little Duck by Beth Cuthin, Cree by Stan Cuthin, illustrated by Mary Longman. There was once a lonely little mud duck who lived all by himself in a muddy swamp not far from a camp of mighty Plains Cree. Every day he would observe the people as they went about their lives. Oh, how the little duck admired those Crees! The camp was full of beautiful women and handsome men and playful, happy children, not to mention the fine horses and smart dogs. So in this book, the story is also told in Cree down at the bottom of the page. Every day the little duck would fly over the camp. Every day the little duck wished that he was tall and handsome like those Cree men. The little mud duck wasn't the best looking of ducks. Out of the water, his short legs made him awkward and slow. But his bumpy, humpy beak was a bit too big. And when he was lucky enough to observe other ducks flying past, he saw that his plain black feathers were no match for their bright fancy feathers. Poor little mud duck, that is why he admired those fine Cree Indians. He wished that he would be just like them. Then he would never be lonely again. One day, as the little duck flew over the camp, he noticed the people were preparing for a big dance. He admired those men even more because they looked so fine in their fancy regalia. Hmm, he thought, maybe if I dance with them, they will ask me to live at their camp. The little duck waddled back to the swamp and dressed for the dance. He wore some bright green leaves into a wreath he wove some bright green leaves into a wreath to wear on his head. Then he gathered some cattail leaves and tied them to his behind. What a fine bustle they made. So there's the leaves and the cattails on his behind. He found some red clay and some white salt and painted his face and chest just like he saw the men do in the camp. Finally, he collected some shells and tied them around his ankles. He paused to admire his reflection in the water. If he couldn't be tall, at least he could be handsome. The little duck strutted into the camp. No one took much notice of him, so he asked a young boy, Where do I sit? But the young boy couldn't reply because all he heard was duck quacking sounds. Being polite, the boy didn't ask the stranger to repeat himself, but merely waved him over to the dance arbor. The little duck tried to talk again to several men. One man greeted him in Cree. Transy short person, Anin Siwagamis, another said in Salto. How are you? asked the third man in Assiniboine. But the little mud duck couldn't understand them. A kindly old woman noticed the duck's confusion and talked to him in sign language. Who are you and where are you from? she asked. When she saw that the little mud duck could not understand her, she patted him gently and pointed for the little duck to sit near the drummers. Soon the singers started singing and many people started to dance. The little duck tried to dance just like the young men, but his legs were too short. The best he could do was a quick hopping waddle which drew laughter from the crowd. The dust from the dancers, fast, fancy dancing, blinded the little fellow and made him squeeze and sneeze. Not only that, but dancers kept stepping on him because he was so short and so slow. So there he is dancing and people are stepping on him. Bruised and battered, the little duck waddled broken-hearted back to the swamp. I'll never be a Cree. I'll always be lonely, he thought to himself as he pulled off his headdress. Slowly he washed off the paint. Slowly he untied his ankle shells and he pulled the wilted leaves from his behind. He sighed. What was a poor little mud duck to do? Then off in the distance he heard the sounds of many mud ducks. <clears throat> calling glorious wonderful mud duck words that he could understand. His heart hummed with joy as he realized he was happy to be a mud duck and he knew he would never be lonely again.
So there's the other mud ducks. So just a little bit about the author of this book. Beth Cuthland is a Cree author who grew up in Saskatchewan and Alberta. She has completed a graduate degree in creative writing at the University of Arizona. Her previous books include Horse Dance to Emerald Mountain and Voices in the Waterfall. She teaches at the Nicola Valley Institute of Technology in Merritt, British Columbia. So that is a little book of the duck. So we're going to go ahead and make our own ducks. So you can uh, for sure make whatever color of duck you want. If you want to make a little mud duck, um, you can use some black uh, paper to start and make it look like the one in the book. So these are the ones that I've made. And so this is more traditionally sometimes what we think about as a duck or a <clears throat> baby duck. And uh, this is, would be more like looking like a mallard duck that we have in our area. So just to start, uh, what we need to do is trace some circles. So if you'll notice, my bottom circle is a little bigger than my top. And how I did that is I took a cup and I traced the large opening of the cup here and then I flipped over and I traced the bottom of the cup for the head. So if you do those two things, you can go ahead and uh, get your duck started. So if you want to make a dark color duck, uh, like the one in the book, you can use some black paper. So you can use your uh, um, craft foam, which we have here. It's a little thicker. Or you can use construction paper. So I have some circles cut out. I'm going to show you how I made my duck. So I'm just going to start by gluing my two circles together. So I'm going to glue that on the front there. So that's the start of my duck. And then to make the wings, if you look at my two ducks, I have two different colored wings because I used cupcake papers. So if you have cupcake papers around the house, you use whatever color you have. Um, these are Christmas ones, and these are just the pastel colored ones. And so all I did was I folded the cupcake paper in half, and then I folded it in half again, which gives me a quarter of the paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim that. So that's really just a quarter of a piece of a cupcake paper. So then I'm going to go ahead and glue those on for my wings. So if you don't have colored cupcake papers at home, you can use your white ones and you can take your marker or you can take some food coloring and you can try to color them. But then you'll have to let them dry out a little bit before you attach them onto your duck. And then the next step would be to add some eyes. So I've got two different options for eyes. Um, this one I just drew on with a marker, and these ones I used, the googly eyes that we have in our craft supplies. So if you have those googly eyes, you can go ahead and use them. I'm just going to find two that I like, and I'm going to add those on. So that's where we are so far with our duck. And then a couple more steps. So for the beak, I'm using a large piece of orange craft foam. And you can always use construction paper, you have that too. So you can see the shape that I've used on my other ducks. And so I'm just going to go ahead and round that off at the top and add that. So I'm going to attach that onto my duck. Okay, so that's where we are so far. And then lastly, to make your uh, duck into a puppet, I'm going to take a single hole punch and I'm going to go ahead and punch a couple of holes around and they need to be just big enough for my fingers to fit through so that I can use this as a puppet and then my fingers are going to be his um, 
legs and his feet. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut two holes to start just so that you know where you want your two finger holes to be. And then once you've done that, um, if you have a larger craft punch or a scrapbooking punch that cuts a large hole, you can certainly use that punch and uh, use one that you can fit your fingers through. And if you don't, you can do what I'm going to do here, which is then take your single punch and just continue to make some extra holes. So it's probably going to take about five or six holes. And you just continue to make that hole larger. So cut a couple all around your original hole until you feel like that's large enough for your fingers. And then you're going to go ahead and push your fingers through there. So with the craft foam, it's going to stretch a little bit. And with your paper, if you're going to use your construction paper like this, then you need to be a little more exact about your finger holes because it's just going to rip if you try to force your fingers through. So when you're doing that, you can go ahead and make your duck puppets.